okay uh, welcome back class and today we will be talking about some different problems faced in the city regarding transportation so uh, as we know that uh, as the city grows larger it becomes more complex it has become uh, more uh, the traveling patterns the population sizes type of different services offered in large metropolitans uh, a lot of complexity is involved a uh, different type of uh, your infrastructure uh, are then raised to tackle or to reduce these uh, different types of problems out there uh, but uh, as the city grew, grew, grows bigger uh, the mobility patterns are there very become very difficult to judge and what happens is that uh, with the large size of people living in the outskirts the travel patterns or dependencies there they shift over time so due to the highly dynamic nature of the urban growth patterns uh, especially the land use development in which different land users quickly switched over a different type of employment opportunities they are very uh, i would say very fast in changing very dynamic in nature so sometimes it over some period of time you need to uh, re check how transportation system is evolving in your city and what sort of measures can be taken to resolve different types of problems so uh, now there because of lot of urban mobilities the types of problems they vary a lot and we'll today we'll dis discuss about these different types of problems uh, so the first problem which comes to mind everyone's mind even as you students would be the congestion and by congestion you can also include the difficulty in park parking spaces especially in the city center or central areas so congestion is now one of the most i would say prevalent uh, form of transport problem and we are talking about when we have someone is talking about that we have face a transportation problems or issues in our city most probably they are referring to the congestion there are a lot of traffic on the road and uh, we are it's become very difficult to conveniently move within the city and uh, uh, if for example if there is on weekend or if there is a holiday you can see that a city is uh, uh, depending on the type uh, of the city functionalities of the city uh, in the metropolitan especially the lot of labor is coming from out of the city and when they are uh and in the normal days when they are doing job and they're coming to the city the city is highly congested and usually on the weekend just see example case of islamabad on the weekend all of the roads are i mean they are very uh very much empty on they have, have have a capacity to bear the load lot of road road network is there but during the normal days or working days you see a lot of congestion especially in the peak hours the congestion is already there and uh, they are uh, uh, it has been uh, observed that the congestion has grew over time predominantly because of the automobile dependency in the cities uh, now type of your infrastructure provided the how much facilities you are providing how much infra transport infrastructure but transport infrastructure i mean road capacities road lengths uh, lanes and how much traffic can be accommodated on the road so that i'm talking about that transport infrastructure so it is directly linked how much you are going to be supplying the type of infrastructure would directly link it to the motorization rate how many people will use motorcycle uh, uh, or car on the road so it all depends upon the supply of the transportation infrastructure and it does not mean that the infrastructure is directly proportional to your growth of mobility like if you provide roads wide roads it does not equate to the growth of mobility because mobility if, if there is lot of road on the uh, lot of traffic on the road mobility would be low uh the another problem which i was talking about is the parking problem so especially in the central area a lot of problem is there we need parking space in the central area because people travel there for jobs maybe for commercial activities but due to the high development rates high density rates in the old city area or uh, central areas by central areas i mean cbds parking is very expensive and parking have a lot lo a lot of congestion especially apparent in the central areas of the city 
but this trans uh, like uh, congestion is not a problem of today world even in rome the julius caesar banned use of private vehicles in the daylight the first 10 hours of daylight so congestion is not does uh, we have not yet found a, i would say a, a universally acceptable way to reduce, reduce the congestion there are different measures adopted by different cities over time which have tried to reduce the congestion some have been successful some are partially successful and some have totally failed so we'll talk about this uh, measures to contain or reduce congestion but uh, this like uh, i was telling you the congestion is not a problem of modern day it also exists in in recorded history congestion has been a very problematic thing in the transportation systems so let's try to understand what is congestion by congestion means that when the transportation demand exceeds the transportation supply at a specific point at a specific time okay Spe specific space and time so at a specific time specific place the supply is not there to meet the demand more cars less traffic capacities so at a specific point in time and specific on the road system there is spe specific sections okay maybe cross junction or specific place so this is how you define congestion there are two types of congestion by the world it's very apparent that the recurrent congestion and non recurrent so recurrent is basically which we are it is occurring again and again in peak hours so that is congestion so if you see this a graph if this is the capacity of your road if the road if your traffic exceeds this capacity limit that is congestion and that is a very much uh, common in the peak hours that in the morning or in the afternoon when people are coming back from the jobs so and by the rest of the day that uh, it's unused capacity is right there the different uh, uh, sources of recurring and non recurring and depending upon this is two case studies of usa and germany in which uh, in america there are a lot of reasons for the uh, congestions congestion and while in germany there are few reasons like traffic accident work zones uh, so depending upon even your country and time your type of congestion or the cause of the uh, of this congestion it varies a lot so to, to understand congestion or to reduce the congestion we need to know what are the main sources or problems which instigate this congestions on the road so how do we like uh, what is recurring congestion it is basically more or less every week uh, on week uh, on working days weekdays to peak hour and peak hours during morning and the afternoon uh excuse me sir uh, please uh, uh, yes please uh, i think I'm, yes uh, miss alia yes please सर पीछे वाली स्लाइड पे एक सेकंड जाते हैं प्लीज नहीं नहीं सर अगली जो अभी यूएस और जर्मनी का जी सर सर इसमें व्हाई इज लाइक वेदर और पुअर सिग्नल टाइमिंग नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम इन जर्मनी लाइक व्हाट्स द डिफरेंस इन देयर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम जो के इज मेकिंग जो जर्मन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सिस्टम इसको मोर एफिशिएंट कैसे बना रहे हैं ओके दिस फिगर और दिस डायग्राम दिस नॉट इट्स नॉट टेलिंग यू हाउ मच कंजेशन इज राइट देयर it's just uh, it's just dividing up different causes behind the congestion of course maybe the in germany there are lab congestion or how you measure congestion is different and in united states in different i'll go into the how we measure congestion i will go into it how we quantify congestion will go into that okay for for this uh, representation purposes i would suggest that germany has better traffic management system so it is not uh, the weather or the poor signal timing is not so much effective in case of germany but in the united states it's there probably because of better tra traffic management system better road network uh, road networks are designed in such a way that the weather does not affect the journey united states for example it is a very big country so there is a lot of variation in weather so uh, there is an issue with that in congestion relatively germany is small their management system is better people follow the laws 
follow the rules and regulations. So in my opinion, that is the reason that it has less number of causes, but it does not mean that congestion is less in Germany as compared to the United States. Clear? Salim? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, okay, let's uh, moving on. So there are some, some different uh, understanding behind recurring, uh, recurring congestion is that the uh, it has a uh, area has a fixed capacity. It has a limit of capacity. So it will remain same. So it's very difficult to change the fixed capacity of the road, which already constructed, right? Now, different types of things are uh, applicable on those fixed capacity. If, if some of you have studied uh, transportation in your own uh, bachelor's level, so level of service or road characteristics of every road, it varies, right? So recurring congestion can be due to that as well. Uh, the main thing which, again, recurring congestion happens when the demand exceeds the design capacity. So we'll all go into the designs, uh, road design. It is totally different dynamics. We'll stay with the uh, management side of the traffic. Okay, now uh, there is another debate uh, and you might agree or disagree. It's fine that how much big road should be provided? How much wide road should be provided? If we provide such a large road, a wide road or the wide corridor, is it effective or not? Over, if we are giving, uh, uh, giving a large chunk of road, if, under, if, if that capacity is underutilized, then it's a problematic. So it will be economically, it will be, uh, not viable. And even if you're providing a capacity which is limited, then that again poses a problem of congestion. So there is a debate that how much capacity of a particular road should be there. So every uh, every planner or transportation engineer or traffic engineer, they have their own different uh, methodologies in which they say that this is the optimum capacity. So uh, uh, it's that's a, another debate. So. Uh, we'll go into it as well. Okay, uh, then is uh, commuting times. How much time does it take to have a trip? So by trip, you mean maybe going to the work. Let's talk about that. So we are going to the work. Let's, so in Milan, average it's 26 minutes. And if you go to the uh, Hong Kong and Shanghai, around 150 minutes it take to reach their offices. So uh, now I would like to ask the students how much if you're going if you're doing job and in normal days if you're not uh, confined to the 50 percent at home, working work from home when you were going to the offices how much was the average time to reach the office anyone in your uh, how much do you travel for work please raise your hand and then uh, yes is one please sir five minutes like that okay. That's that's fine. That's good. Anyone else? Yes, I am. There are five to eight minutes. Okay, that's very good. That's very good time. Okay. Uh, yes. Anyone else? Okay. When I was working in Lahore, I was traveling around forty-five to yes, forty to fifty minutes. It took me to reach from my my home to my office when I was working in Lahore. And well, of course, now I am uh, residing inside the campus of so five minutes. Uh, yes, sir, boss, please. So 35 minutes. OK, 35 minutes. So OK, good. So under less than one hour, it's I think it's acceptable to most of you that uh, if you have to travel less than 50 minutes or 60 minutes, then more or less everyone is acceptable that OK, I can do a job over there. So, OK. So everyone's commuting time varies a lot, so it all depends upon the employment patterns. If you get another job, your commuting might might change. OK, so challenges uh, have of uh, traffic congestion are faced all over the world, not even the developed and developing world. Congestion is a problem. Uh, so different factors are there which you call congestion or this is congestion or it's not congestion. Uh, when is your delay? How much are your uh, 
I'll go into this uh, quantification that will explain it better. So there is, uh, of course, challenges in our traffic as well. There are a lot of, not only road traffic is there, congestion is there, a lot of congestion at the airports as well. And when the flight, your flight is usually delayed because there is a problem with some plane on the runway or something like that. So a lot of delays happen. So that is also kind of a congestion problem. Uh, this was one of the thing which a lot of this is uh, an image for showing that how much air traffic is there. So do you think that there is a congestion? You can assume that depending on the date and time, at night time, you would see that there is less congestion in the Europe. Uh, but as soon as the light is reaching Europe, uh, certainly a lot of congestion is happening in the Euro European region in the morning, early morning, so many flights there. So congestion is also worldwide as well with respect to traffic. This is traffic with respect to sea. So maritime traffic is also there. Uh, you might have heard about that uh, Suez Canal in which there was wood stuck and there was a lot of delay and a lot of things could not reach Europe from the China or this Middle East or Asian context. So that posed a very big problem of your uh, congestion. So congestion is also linked to your parking as well. Uh, maybe roaming around, you are looking for parking space, sometimes called as cruising. So that is also adding to the congestion as well. Uh, sometimes when you go for, the, for a, let's say, a downtown, you're going to a shopping place, you waste 10, 20 minutes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just to look for the parking space. You will drop off your friends and then you're looking for the parking. So that is causing congestion on the road. You are just looking for the roads. So, or you maybe have parked illegally or maybe you have stopped the car on the main road. So that is contributing to the congestion. So parking, so again, now there is a debate that should we provide more parking or should we provide less parking? So that, uh, again, Different panels are different. I think we have talked about in the previous lectures as well. Should we give parking or not? So uh, sometimes in the development, it's better to just just roam around or cruise around than to park at a part, particular place because of the high parking fees. That's there. And sometimes uh, there is a poor traffic signals, and that can also influence your congestion. OK, so congestion is, uh, I mean, it's a very biggest form of traffic challenges in today's world. OK, and treating congestion will have its own effects. It will have feedback effects. OK, so. Uh, I'll go to the figure and I think that would be like most prominent. Yes, so congestion is there. So when your congestion is there, the public is very unhappy that we need more capacity to accommodate traffic. We need bigger roads. We need flyovers. We need underpasses. We need uh, signal-free corridors, for example. So pressures are there to increase the capacity. And once we, uh, we undertake that, okay, the public wants another lane of road, then we say, OK, let's provide another lane or let's increase the capacity of the road. Now new capacity is, has, is there, enhanced capacity. Now it can accommodate more cars. And when it, it, is, it is providing more spaces there, it is basically reducing the friction or the friction of mobility. Now people will not face so much difficulty in assessing this road. So what will happen? People will start buying cars because now the infrastructure is basically supporting your need for the car because you can now drive around. So it will then, of course, it will also incite urban sprawl and development and people will start making more trips. It's if you increase the accessibility and mobility, people will start using more. For example, uh, uh, Lahore and Islamabad motorway. Because of the because of motorway, friction is less. If I if I wanted to go via GT road, maybe I would not travel every weekend to Lahore. But due to uh, provision of in, uh, the supply infrastructure motorway, everyone is using motorway now. 
because it is now provided lower level of friction. So now on every weekend I travel to Lahore. So provision of infrastructure actually increases the use of the road network or the infrastructure. So ultimately, when more people will start using over time, after maybe after five years, ten years, then it will begin to become congested. Congested. So that is called the vicious cycle of congestion, just like vicious cycle of poverty. It's also called vicious cycle of congestion as well, which is very difficult to undermine. So how do we calculate congestion? How do we uh, quantify congestion or uh, mathematically represent that uh, this is congestion and this is not congestion? So just a simple ratio developed by American Institute of Transportation. Taxes are very important. Uh, one of the most uh, pioneer institute in transportation studies. So they developed that travel time index is a ratio time taken for a right for a trip during peak hour divided by time taken in regular condition or let's say uh, or non peak hours. Clear? Jitna time aapko laga hai subha peak hour mein jane mein divided by time taken when there was no peak hour. Simple, simple ratio. And if the value is more than one, it means congestion is happening. A value of a, around one or more than one is one is congestion. OK, so now uh, it's again uh, uh, the assumption or I would say limitation of this is that you this is usually applied for at the city level, but you cannot see it or see it for the particular road network or this road only. Or specific structure. So this is a bad uh, backdrop. Now this travel time index is also called congestion index. Okay, and of course urban population and it, uh, this travel index time index is highly correlated. We'll go into that. Uh, whenever a city is there with a population more than one million, the congestion index starts increasing. The more population after one million, congestion index will increase. So for transportation point of view or road transportation point of view, maybe less than 1 million uh, population in a city is a, it's that city is, would be good. So maybe uh, we can think of it if we're planning for future city development. Yes, sir, many heart yeah, sorry, sorry, I wanted to ask. Yes, sir, yeah, please. Uh, yes, sir, I wanted to ask you uh, this can be applied to cities. This uh, is our index, the Texas Institute of uh, Transport Institute. So can be applied to smaller towns or uh, 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 outskirts mein towns or something, jo colonies or housing societies hoti hai, could be applied to that. OK, for small towns i would say yes for small towns or small cities or secondary city tertiary cities medium sized cities okay that is fine but it's not uh, it's not useful for colonies or housing schemes because there is no congestion there people are not doing jobs in the housing scheme they are traveling to the city center they are traveling to the city uh, in uh, to their employment patterns so in a housing scheme uh, calculate we can calculate it but it would be like meaningless uh, because a lot of people are not traveling to uh, within how to the housing schemes or the road is not used as, used as a primary road network. It's just a housing scheme. It is cut off. So I would not uh, use it for the small schemes or towns, but I would say it for small, medium cities or of course big cities. Clear, Salia? Yes, sir. Okay, great. OK, so we were talking about that uh, uh, depending upon different worlds, uh, different cities of the world, different type of densities and modes are there. So uh, they might have some different thresholds. This this an analysis was basically based on American cities, so we should be cautious to apply on the other cities. So this is another uh, representation of the study being done by the Texas Transportation Institute in which they found out that after 1000 population 1 million a tremendous increase in congestion roadway congestion is observed we were talking about that okay till one it's fine after around one and after one this is congestion 
So if you see that there is a high correlation or uh, uh, dependency on each other, that road congestion increases. If the population increases, so will the road congestion index. So that is uh, established mathematically. So is, is congestion index good? We say that, okay, number of cars per population is good. It's highly correlated. But as per, uh, if we uh, analyze G congestion index with respect to GBT per capita, you see that a higher number of road congestion index means lower GDP per capita in that area. So economically, if you're talking about it, the congestion is very bad. Congestion is not good for your economic development of your city. So we kindly repeat the GDP or congestion index ka opposite relation. Okay, so uh, city size and uh, city uh, population and uh, you please, is it clear? Population and congestion index. Okay, so I'll talk about economic development. So GDP per capita is uh, arguably uh, considered an indicator for economic development. So GDP per capita is inversely related to congestion index. So if a city is experiencing a high congestion index, and if you plot it, you will see that in that area, GDP per capita is low. So there is another hypothesis being made that if your congestion index is limited, is it reduced or it is less than one, your GDP per capita would be better in that area, or that might affect as well. So that is again statistically established. So this one you understand? Economic development and congestion index. Okay, great. Okay, so this is a congestion index. If we uh, if we have the data, I don't doubt I doubt it. Yes, Alia, please. Um sir, aapne kaha ki congestion is not good for uh, economic development. Uh, but like, sir, uh, let's say if there is an urbanization place, the population is population increase, hoti hai, to technically don't we say that services or functions increase or uh, jitni aapki services increase, hoti hai, utni aapki, uh, economic development is increased? You're right, you're right, you're absolutely right. But we are talking about per capita, per person, GDP per person. When the urbanization mein population if it increases, then the GDP capita will reduce per capita. All right, sir. All you right. understand? Yes, we are talking yes. about per capita. Yes. So yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So another is that I doubt if we have the data for Pakistan. We don't have enough data. I have not seen a study with, on congestion index in Pakistan as of yet. Uh, but in the world, it, due to the with the with the time. A lot of people are buying cars and there are a lot of infrastructure there. So the congestion index has increased. Even America, which is automobile dependent, that have now, most of the cities are now having congestion issues. So how do we, now the problem is, how do we mitigate it? How do we reduce congestion? So now I would ask your opinion. What do you think are the solutions to reduce congestion? Anyone, class, please. Just, I want your idea. Uh, how can we reduce traffic congestion in Pakistan? Yes, Azan, please. Uh, sir, we intelligent transportation system. If we have to incorporate it, we have to advance uh, management traffic system. Also. Okay, okay. Okay, right, we can do that. ITS is a broad thing, then, okay, we need to know about smart and, okay, we can do that as well. Yes, Alia, please. Uh, sir, yes, I would uh, add that ke smart uh, transportation system, ITS is definitely a good idea. At the same time, we could also uh, apply start strategies which encourage kare, uh, at least city centers mein humare ke public transport use kiya jaye rather than uh, ke, uh, cars ke upar hi dependence ki jaye because bahut si like jitni bhi hamari achhi sustainable cities hai around the world uh, they encourage public transport at least inside the city centers your cdbs wagaira hote hain so it reduces congestion a lot hmm. yes good point good point ayam please uh, sir, I think that the 
एक्चुअल जो है मिक्स यूज डेवलपमेंट की तरफ अगर हम चले गए तो इसे काफी कंजेशन पे कंट्रोल हो सकता है मिक्स यूज डेवलपमेंट से इसी ओके ओके टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑल यू राइट राइट आई आई दैट मिक्स डेवलपमेंट वुड हेल्प अस रिड्यूस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड फोर्स पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन वुड हेल्प अस बेटर आईट इंट्रोड्यूशन ऑफ आई टी सिस्टम बट वट है like most of the time problem is development is already been done construction road networks and load road is already there now we cannot overhaul the infrastructure now okay old city is already developed now what would be the criteria for con- my reducing congestion what would be the measure you would take for future expansion i agree that okay i i will launch its i will have a proper public transportation system and i would uh really go towards uh, mixed mixed land use development what about the already existing infrastructure and the areas in the established built up areas yes sir let please uh, sir underpasses ban sakte hain aur overpass ban sakta hai and like you know uh, uh, public transport be like overpass ke sath jaise hoti hai ke transportation in the sky karke jaise singapore mein ya india ki bhi kafi cities mein उनके जो मेट्रो वेज हैं वो ऊपर ब्रिजेस के नीचे लगे हुए होते हैं और उस तरह चल रहे होते हैं तो वी कुड इनकॉपरेट सच टेक्नोलॉजी इन द एग्जिस्टिंग ट्रांसपोर्टेशन स्ट्रक्चर लाइक ऑरेंज ट्रेन इन लाहौर सिंपल यस सर यस सर बास प्लीज सर uh, जैसे आपने कहा कि मतलब अगर एग्जिस्टिंग पॉपुलेशन या एग्जिस्टिंग डेवलपमेंट हो चुकी है उसको किस तरह कैटर फॉर करें इट वेरीज मतलब प्लेस टू प्लेस लेकिन अगर मैं इस पे करूँ तो अगर हम एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन को ज़्यादा प्रमोशन करें और बजाय इसके कि पैसे ट्रांसपोर्टेशन पे चले जाएं तो और दूसरी बात ये है कि सर अगर हम अच्छी पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट जिस तरह सालहा ने भी एग्जाम्पल दी कि अच्छे ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्रोविजन दें और रिस्ट्रिक्शन एरिया दे के मतलब जिस तरह अगर आप एक रिस्ट्रिक्टेड या बिजनेस डिस्ट्रिक्ट पे अप्रोच कर रहे हैं तो वहाँ पर रिस्ट्रिक्शन हो के मतलब व्हीकल को रिस्ट्रिक्ट किया जाए बजाय इसके को वहाँ पर एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन को प्रमोट किया जाए वेरी गुड पॉइंट यस रिजवान प्लीज सर इसके लिए सबसे ज़्यादा ज़रूरी मेरी नज़र में है कि ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग उसमें सिस्टम में कि हम लोग के जिस तरह पाकिस्तान की बात की जाए हमारे ट्रैफिक डेटा नहीं है ठीक है बात है डेटा कलेक्ट करें अपनी ट्रैफिक इस्लामात की बात कीजिए तो हम डेटा कलेक्ट करें और ऐसा सिस्टम लाएं जिसमें सॉफ्टवेयर बेस्ड हो के लाइक अगर मैंने कहीं भी जाना है तो लाइक मेरा ओरिजिन डेस्टिनेशन एक किस्म का मैं अगर वो फिक्स करूं उस पर सॉफ्टवेयर वगैरह मैं ऐसा है कोई सिस्टम इस टाइप का हो तो वो मुझे पहले से चीज़ें लाइक गाइड कर दे या कंजेशन इस चीज़ से बचा जा सकता है ये ज़रूरी नहीं क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ पे सबसे बड़ा मसला ये होता है क्या नाम है कि हम घर से निकल जाते हैं हमने कहीं भी ट्रैवल करना हम निकल जाते हैं हमें वहाँ पे जाके हम हाईवे पे पता लगेगा अच्छा जी ट्रैफिक जैम हो गई है ठीक है तो अब हम सारे फंस गए वगैरह इस तरह वाला सिस्टम होता है लेकिन जिस तरह हम गूगल मैप को हम कुछ लोग यूज़ करते हैं जिनको आइडिया है उसमें ट्रैफिक का सिस्टम है कि जी अच्छा जी कंजेशन है तो इस तरह का कसम हो कुछ ऐसा सिस्टम लाया जा सकता है जो एग्जिस्टिंग उस डेटा यानी कलेक्ट किया जाए स्पेशली पाकिस्तान में ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड पॉइंट लाइक लाइक मैं जब लाहौर ट्रैवल कर रहा होता हूँ तो लाहौर जब एंटर होने से पहले मैं गूगल मैप्स पे देखता हूँ कि शुड आई एंटर फ्रॉम फ्रॉम साउथ साइड और नॉर्थ साइड लाइक फ्रॉम ठोकर शुड आई एंटर और शुड आई एंटर फ्रॉम बाबू साबू लाइक फ्रॉम यतीम खाना सो दे आर टू थ्री एंट्रीज पॉइंट सो आई गूगल वेन आई एम नियर टू लाहौर आई ऑलवेज लुक इन टू गूगल मैप्स दैट विच पाथ विल सेव मी मोर टाइम So yes, Rizwan, that can be a good option. Uh, yes, Alia, please. सर इसी में हम जी आई एस की वो का यूज भी इन्वॉल्व कर सकते हैं राइट के उसके बेसिस पे वी इम्प्रूव आर ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग जो हमारे ट्रांसपोर्टेशन नेटवर्क हैं उनकी उसकी स्टडी देख के ऑलरेडी किस तरह से हमारे ट्रैफिक फ्लो होती है और फिर उसकी बेसिस पे देन वी कैन सजेस्ट कि किस टाइम पे कौन सी हमारी सर्विसेज जो हैं वो चलनी चाहिए और किस टाइम पे नहीं चलनी चाहिए और पीक ऑर्स एंड ऑल दैट वी कैन स्टडी ultimately it should we should have some kind of methodology or some kind of analysis behind that which enables us to support what kind of decision should we make to uh, reduce the traffic congestion yes sir 
you want to say something uh, yes sir policies be hamari uh, jo bylaws hote hain policies they also play a very huge role in uh, shaping yes. ki hamari uh, transportation planning kaise definitely uh, 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 again our political economic system also influences your which type of transportation alternatives are we focusing on developing in the future uh, yes samad सर इसके अलावा अगर इंटरसिटी कंजेशन के हवाले से बात कर दी सर जो अल्टरनेटिव मोड्स हैं अगर उनको एक्सेसिबल किया जाए या इम्प्रूव किया जाए जैसे ट्रेन है या जो एयरवेज है तो उसमें अगर स्पेशल कोई पैकेज हो इस तरह हो तो लोग उसकी तरफ भी अगर जाएंगे तो फिर इससे भी काफी कम सकता है यस 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 गुड आयाम प्लीज सर अगर हम प्रेजेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को देखें तो कभी भी कंजेशन या सुबह होती है सपोज या फिर शाम को जब लोग एक काम से वापस आते हैं तो हम इसमें ये कर सकते हैं कि जो आप एक साइड वाली कंजेशन को आप दूसरी रोड पर ट्रांसफ़र कर सकते हैं विद टम्प्रेरी कर्व्स लगा के जो आपके लिए इजी एक्सेस होगा एक साइड पे फ्लो करते फिर शाम को हम उसी पैटर्न को रिपीट करके फिर दूसरे रोड को हम यूज़ कर सकते हैं सर That uh, let's say four lanes are okay. ठीक है दो आने की और दो जाने की okay? तो what in the morning because traffic flow is inside, तो वो तीन खोल देते हैं towards inside and one on the outside. And in the reverse, when it's uh, in the evening, when it's evening और लोगों ने बाहर जाना है, then they open these three uh, for outside और जो inside वाली बंद कर देते हैं. You got my point? So I think uh, this is what I am wanted to say. आप ये कहना चाह रहे थे आप? जी सर बिल्कुल यही था तो ये बेसिकली आई ऑब्जर्व दिस इन बैंकॉक अ लॉट व्हेन यू गोइंग टू डाउनटाउन ओके सो व्हाट आर द सम ऑफ द आई विल जस्ट गो थ्रू यू हैव डिस्कस्ड वेरी वाइटर पॉइंट्स सो आई विल जस्ट गो थ्रू सम ऑप्शंस दैट दे आर रैम मीटरिंग इन व्हिच यू स्टॉप सम कार्स बिफोर एंटरिंग द सिटी सो यू नॉट लेटिंग ऑल ऑफ द कार्स गो इनसाइड द सिटी मे बी रिस्ट्रिक्टेड कार्स फ्रॉम एंटरिंग द सिटी आई थिंक वन स्टूडेंट मेंशन दिस better traffic synchronization traffic a lot because of time uh, uh, in pakistan i think is now it has changed but previously i observed that uh, your uh, traffic signal is constant the time 40 minutes 60 minutes seconds 40 seconds of every, uh, is same in the morning evening so what we do we need to have data and based on the data in the morning uh, when the inflow is more you need to open uh more signal for the inflow maybe more seconds for the inflow and the outflow maybe less seconds so that would reduce so traffic synchronization is very important uh uh for example i have seen this uh, let's talk about nust uh, g11 uh, traffic signal the time in the morning in the afternoon in the evening and at the night it has is remain same is same for example at late night maybe after 12 o'clock your signals should be like maybe less 20 second signal because uh, less number of traffic is there so you need to synchronize the traffic based on the traffic flow so its is uh, like one of the smart cities they sensors are there so they judge that okay this road has more routes uh, more cars now so let's open the signal for a longer duration as compared to the road lane which has less number of cars so maybe it will open for less seconds so traffic signal synchronization i hope you got the point so that is another mayer uh, then is better incident management uh, i am you want to say something okay. sorry sir okay got it got it no problem no problem so incident management is there then you need to have such a good mechanism to clean any kind of road closure like if there is an accident maybe there is some uh, Uh, slide, uh landslide or something so incident managed that would also help in mitigating congestion then is limiting the car ownerships like do not issue uh, there is a high fees on getting uh, uh, this uh, uh, car uh, licensing or ownership like uh, that you can make high fees on that you can restrict them by making Uh, i would another another uh, that give me an idea that sometimes in, uh, in european countries they go for even and odd numbers in bangkok i've also seen that on monday it's only in cars with even numbers 
their number plates with E1. They can go, and on Tuesday, only those cars will end, go to the cities which have old number plates, or right, old numbers. So that's also one way or another. Another I have seen in some countries in that uh, in Singapore, I think I saw it that uh, there's a they also give color color plates. That okay on Monday this white color plates on Tuesday a yellow color number plates can come. So this is another way for uh, tackling your uh, reducing the congestion. Carpooling okay that's another option that people carpool together to reduce number of cars. Uh, maybe give a give a exclusive way for high occupancy vehicles. So more people will travel. People will say, OK, I'll if I'll travel on bus, I can reach quickly as compared to my own car. That's an option. Then you put prices, maybe high price on your parking. Or maybe some tools that you're right entering, entering the city in the, at this time. You have to pay this month amount. So maybe you can add some prices to it. Maybe not acceptable in case of Pakistan sometimes, but people have been doing it. Like some now in Pakistan, I've seen that in especially in commercial areas of Lahore, I've seen that uh, parking was first uh, 30 rupees all day parking. Now they have changed it to hourly parking, maybe 20 rupees, 30 rupees per hour. So the more hours you spent in a parking in a commercial area, the higher is your parking fees. So that's, that's the removing of free parking. Another important part in Islamabad, parking is free, but in other areas in Lahore, Karachi. I've seen that they have parking fees, so that can be effective route to limit people tra to travel. Now, depend again, we were talking about policy and social acceptability, so that might not be a very good way. So, depending upon uh, social acceptability, you might use more effective tools. Offering of a public trans transit a very go-to method, but it's very difficult to do that. To uh, provide them public transit uh, options. It will take a long time and long planning. You just don't provide public transport at the spot very quickly. And uh, which uh, now Arbaz emphasized active transportation or active commuting, uh, usually used in the literature, uh, promoting walking or bicycling. So if that is uh, prioritized, one lane is for, uh, by, uh, let's say, bicycles and walking, and one for cars and one for high high occupancy vehicles like buses. So that is another way to counteract the congestion. Okay, so before we go into uh, another, let's take a five, 10 minutes break, and then we'll talk into another. Yes, is one. Uh, if you have any question, please. Uh, sir, in Dubai, in Dubai, in Dubai, in Dubai, carpooling is an offense. Mana jata hai. तकरीबन 3000 درہم का फाइन है और ये उनके लिए जिन्होंने लाइसेंस नहीं लिया तो ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कि लाइक हम लोगों को कार पूलिंग को प्रमोट करना चाहिए ओके आई एम आई एम नॉट श्योर अबाउट दिस दुबई आई हैव नॉट हर्ड अबाउट इट बट इन यूरोप व्हेन आई वाज ट्रैवलिंग फ्रॉम वन सिटी आई यूज्ड कार पूलिंग एंड दैट इज देयर इज देयर आर एप्स रिकॉग्नाइज्ड बाय द यूरोपियन यूनियन इन व्हिच यू कैन यू कैन put it uh, that you are traveling from this place to this place at that time, then people can carpool. That's quite common in yes, your Dubai country. Maybe, Dubai may be licensed, jinke paas hai, uh, jinke paas licensed hai, wo carpooling ki jazat hai. Lekin uh, jis raha arm, like uh, arm traveling mein jis raha am lo carpooling karte hai, ya WhatsApp group hai, jis raha Pakistan mein joh humare chal, humare yaan, jis raha sabar software nahi. Haan, thik hai, toh yaan pe WhatsApp group hota hai, ji achha ji udar daal diya ho gara. तो उस चीज का मैं कह रहा हूं कि वो एक किस्म का वहां पे ऑफेंस समझ समझा जाता है तो क्या ये चीज हमें इनकरेज नहीं करनी चाहिए इस चीज को आई वुड सजे एज एज अ कार पूलिंग आई वुड ऑलवेज से दैट कार पूलिंग इज बेटर आई डोंट नो व्हाट इज मे बी सिक्योरिटी इशू और समथिंग लाइक दैट दैट इज आई डोंट नो व्हाई व्हाई यू नीड टू हैव अ लाइसेंस फॉर कार पूलिंग बट आई वुड सजेस्ट कार पूलिंग इज अ वेरी गुड मैकेनिज्म टू टू रिड्यूस ट्रैफिक कंजेशन I look into it. Very good point. I'll, it's new information for me. Uh, anyone else, please? If anyone, if this, these uh, Myers uh, kind of uh, gave you some ideas how to reduce congestion in case of Pakistan. 
Yes, uh, एक करना है कि जिस की ना ना लाइक मेरे भाई ने भी ना इस पे की एप्लीकेशन डेवलप की थी तो लाइक like, मैंने ये चीज एक्सपीरियंस की थी पाकिस्तान में इस चीज का ये बड़ा इशू है लाइक like, लोगों में अवेयरनेस डालना करीम वगैरह ऊपर वगैरह चल रही है वो इस वजह से वो इंटरनेशनल है इस वजह से उस मामला में चल रही है लेकिन जब कार की बात की एक एप्लीकेशन यानी लॉन्च करने के लिए भी आपको एक किस्म का लाइक यू नीड अज अमाउंट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट वगैरह ना इस तरह के मामला हैं तो लोग लाइक एक पाकिस्तान में बड़े इस तरह की चीजों को लेकिन लाइक मुश्किल होता है काफी मुश्किल होता है ओके आई एग्री विद यू रिजवान बट इन द फ्यूचर एवरीथिंग इज एप बेस्ड रेटिंग सिस्टम्स एंड एवरीथिंग इज देयर सिक्योरिटीज विल गेट बेटर सो आई वुड से दैट कार पुलिंग विल बी वन डे विल बी वेरी मच फॉर एग्जांपल दिस दिस एप लिफ्ट एल वाई एफ टी this lift that encourages car pooling in america that is that is used and even in uber there is an option in uh, of car pooling uh, in america not in pakistan but in the developed countries you can car pool if you travel from one point to another so uh, let me take you an example in, in pakistan uh, i was traveling from one point to another 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 person you know you know you can also someone can uh, say that this driver is about to drop off the passenger and then they will pick you up so what the happened that that person was basically on the way for uh, the driver uh, the captain you would say that they said okay sir let's pick this as one on the way so i don't have to come back to pick him again so you can also work with the loopholes as well uh okay class then let's play take a 5 10 minutes break it's 6 22 630 we'll be back okay So thank you. I'll stop the recording.